Hi friends, welcome to Smart News Digital. Let's have discussion on today's Hindu newspaper for the date 19th July 2018. Today's first topic is Sabarimala temple ban is unreasonable according to Supreme Court. Constitution bench was hearing the case whether fundamental right of women to pray at the place of their choice can be discriminated or not. This is the question. For the last 50 years at the Sabarimala temple, women were not allowed to enter and pray and offer their prayers. This was the question. Various activists wanted this ban to be removed. So this was the question in front of Supreme Court. Supreme Court said tagging women's right to enter temple with her menstrual cycle is unreasonable because women aged between 10 to 50 years old were not allowed to enter the temple for the last 50 years. They were excluded. They were denied their basic rights. Why they were not allowed? Just one reason they are saying, which is nothing but a menstruation. Supreme Court said there is no concept called private mandirs. That means there is no concept called private temples. Once temple is opened, it is open for all. You cannot exclude male or female. You cannot exclude any section of the society. It is open for all, irrespective of the gender, irrespective of the sex. All over the world, people are coming and visiting and they are offering prayers at the Sabrimala temple. So these make this temple qualified to be called as public place of worship. And when you say a religion, religion is a personal relationship between you and your creator. There is no institution can come and interfere in your relationship with God. When you deny the rights of women to enter into the temple, we are violating the article 14. 21, 25 and there is no proper reason for excluding them from entering the temple. There is no essential religious practice involved in excluding them, in banning their entry. Religious institutions have the right to manage their affairs but it does not mean they can ban the entry of women. They constitute 50% of our population. No progressive nation would deny the right of women who constitute 50 percentage of population. A woman is a creation of God, whether you believe or not. If you believe in God, they are creation of God. If you believe in nature, they are creation of nature. By nature, they have this biological feature called menstruation. By citing this as a reason, we cannot exclude them from employment, worship or anything. Article 25 clearly says, freedom of conscience and right to practice religion. It is their constitutional right. Nobody can deny that right. It is not even a legislative right. It is the constitutional right. Nobody can violate that. There are temples which allow visitors only up to a certain point of a temple, but no temple completely banning the entry of women. Only this particular temple banned the entry of women for the last 50 years which is unacceptable according to the Supreme Court. The constitution upheld the values of liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship irrespective of you being a man or women. Let's celebrate this landmark judgment. Today's second topic is getting the language count right. Have you ever heard about the death of a language? The death of a language happens in silence because we do not worry about death of any language. We are worried about our development. We are worried about our growth. Because of its nature, language is not visible and it fails to move anyone except the very last speaker of that particular language. When a language disappears, it goes forever, taking with it the knowledge it had gathered over centuries. Language is part of our culture. Large part of our culture gets exterminated because of slight shift in policy decisions. By making negative decision, we allow a language to die. By taking a small positive bureaucratic decision, we can preserve many many languages that are worth to preserve. Over the last many decades, governments have been carrying out decadal census. 1931 census was a landmark census because we came to know the composition of caste and community. India learned that by 1931 census, India had 1652 mother tongues were spoken by our people. But using ill-founded logic, using unscientific methods, the, this, figure, this figure was reduced to only 109 
in the 1971 census which is cause of worry which is cause of concern what is that unscientific method they were using which made this number to reduce to 109 the logic they were following was that when a language spoken by more than 10000 people only deserves respectability which means a language which is spoken by less than 10000 people do not deserve respect which is illogical which is unscientific which is not fair at all because you cannot measure the language worth by considering the number of people who are speaking it census of india recently released that the language data based on 2011 census according to this data 1369 languages have been grouped under total of 121 group labels out of these 22 languages are included in the eighth schedule which are called scheduled languages other languages are called non-scheduled languages an analysis shows that most of the groupings are forced for instance under the heading called hindi there are nearly 50 other languages for example bojpuri which is spoken by 5 crore people it has its own vocabulary own style own theatrical form own cinema but still it comes under hindi which is unacceptable similarly rajasthani which is spoken by 3 crore people also comes under hindi even the kubawni of uttarakhand is also added under the heading called hindi according to the report around 52 crore people are speaking hindi as their mother tongue which is not so similarly for sanskrit also the figure is inflated we all know that english is one of the languages which is widely used in various fields including education media health sector science etc but english is seen in the perspective of mother tongue only it is not considered in the category called second language to some extent english is a language of integration in our country even though countries do not take much care to preserve languages unesco taking various measures to preserve languages all over the world from 1940s onwards it wanted to establish a translation bureau in 2018 unesco executive board debated multilingualism in the context of education for all why we have to give importance to language what role a language can play language is our identity language can help in widening access to education language can ensure livelihood language can preserve our culture and knowledge traditions unesco also launched linguistic diversity network and supported research on languages it also released an atlas of world languages in danger from this article what we have to understand is constitution have given us right to preserve and protect our own language our mother tongue language is our identity it is our duty to protect and preserve it the third topic for today's is the Wuhan breakthrough Nepal PM KP Sharma Oli does not want to antagonize New Delhi as well as Beijing also it wanted to seek benefits from both nations this Wuhan summit have opened up strategic communications India and China can be a joint custodians rather than rivals in managing their relationship with the neighbors the neighbors which are common to both China and India China proposed 2 plus 1 dialogue mechanism last month here 2 means India and China 1 means Nepal this one not only confined to Nepal it can be extended to any country now the ball is in India's court because China has proposed China is ready Nepal is also ready now India has to take a decision now to know whether this 2 plus 1 dialogue mechanism can be useful or not we have a pilot project called Nepal because Nepal offers a perfect opening to test whether Beijing and New Delhi can collectively rise and uplift their neighbors based on their genuine consent Nepal is a neighbor to India as well as China India wants Nepal to grow China has influence in Nepal Nepal has to balance this relationship between India and China because India and China are not only raising powers in Asia all over the world these two countries are raising in 21st century so Nepal wants to get benefit from both the nations if the Nepal pilot project works well this 2 plus 1 dialogue mechanism can be used in other countries also and India and China can become a twin engines of regional growth today's fourth topic is restoring the faith in EVMs EVM here means electronic voting machine 
Several opposition parties in the country wanted to discuss the malfunctioning of electronic voting machines in the current monsoon session itself. These opposition parties wanted to go back to ballot papers in the upcoming assembly elections and general elections which are going to be held next year. Recently, Chief Election Commissioner O.P. Rawat said, we cannot go back to ballot paper, whatever the issue we have to deal with EVM only. When T.N. Session was functioning as Chief Election Commissioner, he brought revolutionary reforms which gained the confidence of the people, which ensured the independence of the Election Commission. But recent times, Election Commission is losing that confidence, losing that independence. Now and then, we get the reports of malfunctioning of EVMs, which is cause of concern. In a democracy, there is nothing more important than the credibility of the election process. Election process is the main and pillar in a democracy. As we have seen little earlier, many opposition parties wanted to go back to ballot paper. It is nothing but misplaced sense of confidence. Several problems were associated with ballot papers. We cannot go back to ballot papers just citing that EVMs are malfunctioning. EVMs can favor one party to win. EVMs have really brought some structural changes. Earlier, during ballot paper time, lot of invalid votes will be polled, but now they have reduced to a larger extent. Interestingly, even during ballot paper time, lot of peculiar theories were circulated. One theory is Russian ink was used during uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi period. In a democracy, electoral process have to be properly functioning. What we have to do? We have lot of issues. Opposition parties wanted to go back to ballot paper. Election commission saying that EVM is okay, but there are malfunctioning of EVMs also. What we have to do? According to the author of this article, we can make couple of procedural changes in the existing system. The election commission already using voter verifiable paper audit trail with an attached printer. At present, how this printer is working? If you cast your vote in EVMs, the printed paper is directly dropped in the box. You can see the print only for 7 seconds. This author is saying, instead of showing it for 7 seconds, give that print paper Give the print paper to the voter. Let him put it in the box. This was the procedure we have followed before introducing EVM. In the current system, if you want to count the ballot papers, you have to go to the court and ask for it. But what this author is saying that election commission have to devise a new procedure according to which when a margin is below 10, we can go and count the ballot papers. These are the two ideas this author is providing to ensure the transparency. In a democracy, election should not only be fair, but should be seen to be fair. Today's fifth topic is Lok Sabha clears detention policy. Right to Education Act came into picture in 2010, April 1st. This Right to Education Act stipulated that no children in the 5th standard or 8th standard should be detained, but they have to be passed in every standard in order to increase the number of students who are studying in the elementary education. It is to ensure that basic elementary education is given to all the people in the country. But there was a talk that because of this no detention policy, poor outcome is resulted. That is, people are, that is, students are not studying well poor marks they are getting, their outcome is very poor, they are not able to read and write, they are not able to calculate even the basic max. So, government wanted to bring an amendment bill. This, according to this amendment, they will bring back the detention policy. That means, if students are not performing, they will be failed in the class, whether 5th or 8th standard. Why this? tough decision have to be taken by the government. It is to improve the outcomes. It is to ensure the accountability. It is to ensure the quality education. However, it will be at the discretion of the states whether to follow this detention policy or not. This is a happy news. Today's sixth topic is a fishy matter. Fish is one of the cheapest available animal protein that we have. Recently, in June month, Kerala government found that formaldehyde adulterated fish being transported into that state. Following this, in Chennai, investigation happened to look for formaldehyde. The study revealed that 5 to 20 parts per million of this chemical is present in freshwater and marine fish. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India have banned this chemical, while International Agency for Research on Cancer labeled this chemical as carcinogen in 2004 itself. 
on what basis this IARC considered this as carcinogen. It is based on the studies conducted in industries such as printing, textiles and embalming. The studies shows that such workers are affected by high rates of nasopharyngeal and other cancers. But there is a little evidence shows that there is a link between formaldehyde and cancer when it is ingested orally. As we have seen earlier, it is banned by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India and it is considered to be a carcinogen. But still, why it is used in fish? Some of the unscrupulous vendors trying to pass off stale catch as recent one by using this as preservative, which is illegal. We have no evidence to show that ingested formaldehyde will cause cancer. But just because we have no evidence, we cannot be take it as lightly. When certain marine fishes are transported improperly, this formaldehyde forms naturally. This is not a problem. But if you add formaldehyde, that's a problem. Because naturally forming formaldehyde will be binding on the tissue. Whereas this added formaldehyde will remain free, which is a cause of concern. The line between safe consumption and unsafe consumption should be drawn by the experts in a transparent manner, in a scientific manner. Ultimately, consumers have to be benefited. They have to eat healthy food, correct food, proper food. It is the duty of the government to ensure that people are happy. They eat correct food and they live healthy. Thank you so much. <music>